At the moment, our status within the federal government is that uh, um, the department, uh, that's the Department of Environment and Heritage, has actually um, uh, made um, draft recommendations uh, on the process uh, under the EPBC Act, and they were draft recommendations to proceed with the permit for the, uh, for the proposal. On receipt of that, the, uh, the federal minister decided that, um, uh, that given the significant nature of this project, that he would um, uh, instigate a further um, review of the project and has, uh, has um, uh, asked for another six weeks and is, in, is going through a, uh, a process with the chief scientist and a panel of experts to review and audit effectively the work that's been done by the Department of Environment and Heritage and the work that's been done by, uh, by our company. That uh, six week uh, period uh, concludes on the 10th of October. Um, the Minister may make a decision prior to that, but uh, under the current framework, there has to be a decision made by the, by the 10th of October. And obviously at the moment, we're in the, the lead up to a federal election. And so it's, um, it's a little up in the air as to where this process will head over the coming weeks. Look, I just wanted to give you a, a very simple understanding. And as I said, there's a lot of material that certainly happy to direct you to if you'd like to really get an understanding of, of what's gone on through the assessment processes of this project. But at the end of the day, um, this is just looking at one particular area, and this is our marine uh, impact assessment. Uh, the project does involve a, a marine uh, discharge of our effluent. Uh, whilst we uh, are trying to recycle as much of the water as possible within this process, um, at the end of the day, uh, as I said, pulp um, or wood chips involve about 50% water and there's a lot of intake of water to do the washing processes required to, to end up with a, uh, with a white product. And so the project does use water and uh, because of that uh, we have an, an ocean discharge. Technology at the moment doesn't uh, allow us to actually use that that, uh, that effluent or wastewater in any other productive way, unfortunately. It's certainly something that we'll continue to look at in the future. But this just gives you an understanding of the types of work that we've done um, uh, with consultants and experts, toxicologists, marine impact uh, assessors, um, uh, construction engineers, water quality uh, uh, specialists, um, listed threatened and migratory avifauna specialists, to look within the marine area at what the impact of this project is. And all of these things make up that, that overarching $40 million that I spoke about in terms of assessment that's been done on this project thus far. Now what happens, I suppose, if, if the project goes ahead in terms of the marine environment? Well, this just gives you an understanding of the, um, of the marine monitoring program that, that we have proposed and, and would likely be permitted to, uh, to be implemented should the project proceed. And again, it's a very, very detailed process that ensures that um, uh, standards are met, um, not just uh, at uh, the effluent discharge, but also within the receiving waters. And that again is something different than, than any other modern industry uh, the pulp mill is doing around the world. Most pulp mills just simply look at, at what occurs from what they put out, not what actually occurs within the environment that that uh, discharge occurs. So we are doing, doing something here that's, that's very much a first. Look, I wanted to just talk about what's been achieved in pulp mill design, and uh, I don't want to go into too much detail with, with these things, and you could have hundreds of slides in this regard um, that look at these types of factors. But effectively, um, uh, people's perceptions of pulp mills are often uh, back in the, the 1970s and 1980s, and even earlier than that. We have a, a pulp mill at Maryvale in, in, uh, in Gippsland at the moment at Traralgon, which has uh, been operating there for uh, well, since the, the late 1930s. Um, that mill uses uh, elemental chlorine as a bleaching agent, whereas our mill is, is looking to use um, elemental chlorine-free processes or chlor chlorine dioxide, which is a huge shift in terms of uh, technologies in mills uh, since that time. But this just gives you an idea for, for the key um, uh, potential pollutants from, from a mill, what the kind of quantum shift has been over the, past, uh, over the past couple of decades. And certainly you can see the trend with all of this is that the quantum shift has, has been made. And Don made a comment earlier that the, the mill's not perfect, and I think you know, we would agree with that. At the end of the day, um, um, no industry is perfect. 
Um, any emission uh, from any industry has some form of impact, but it's all about the significance of that emission and, and whether it does have the potential to cause an impact in the environment. And uh, quite clearly, when you look at where we've come from to where we are now, I'm sure that we'll continue to, you know, to head down, um, head down the, the path here um, to get closer and closer to zero on these, uh, on these parameters into the future. But the fact is, is that you've made the 99% the gain um, over the last couple of decades and that quantum shift has occurred. A good example of that, as well as with something like dioxins, and this has been probably one of the most controversial aspects of the, of the pulp mill project, and certainly one of the, the most common areas of misconception. And I think Bob Carter spoke about the, the torpedoes uh, earlier that are kind of hanging off the side of the, uh, of the ship um, as far as the global warming uh, debate is concerned. Well, if you think about some of the torpedoes in relation to the dioxin debate that have been uh, hang, hanging off this for the last uh, couple, of, uh, couple of years, but yet it still continues to get press in that this mill has dioxins that are going to harm the, uh, the marine environment and they're the most lethal substance known to man. This gives you an idea from Swedish pulp mills as to what's been achieved over the last couple of decades. Dioxin levels now uh, are currently below the level of recording and authorities internationally are no longer monitoring or regulating dioxins because they've, they've long since taken it off the table as being, a, uh, as being an issue. To give you a simple understanding, our, our predicted maximum concentration of dioxins within our effluent from our mill is about one-tenth of the United States EPA drinking water guidelines for dioxins. Australia doesn't have drinking water guidelines for dioxins, but the United States EPA, uh, which is governing drinking water standards within America, has a dioxin level ten times that of our proposed maximum uh, concentration within our effluent. So if we're putting out United States conforming drinking water uh, through our pipeline, we'd be having 10 times the impact on the environment uh, than, uh, than what we will um, under our proposal. But that's a fairly striking uh, piece of information. You'd think that would be a pretty heavy torpedo to, to fire into the side of a debate such as this. But it continues to get press. Another um, simple uh, analogy with dioxins is that our concentration is uh, one hundredth of the natural concentration in, uh, in breast milk. <coughs> Um, so breast milk is 100 times more than the concentration within the effluent going out into the marine environment. These types of things are, are messages that we've had difficulty getting across. I have put some material up the back and as I said there's some material um, there that, uh, that certainly contains that, those types of messages. I'd certainly encourage people to try and get an understanding of what some of these simple messages are. And that's all been done on science. Um, you know, you might say, well, find it, stand up there and throw these things into the ether. Uh, we're quite prepared to back any of those statements with, with sound science, and, and we believe that our material demonstrates that. Just an idea of, of the colour of our effluent. Um, the colour of effluent after it's gone through uh, primary and secondary treatment is, uh, is something like uh, about wheat tea. Um, after it's diluted with, uh, with, with seawater at 100 time dilution, which occurs well within 100 metres of, of, of our diffuser, um, you, you're getting that kind of uh, colour, which is um, back to, to standard seawater. So effectively you've got that um, at, at the pipeline very quickly being diluted, and, and we estimate it's, it's within, uh, within about uh, 5 to 10 metres to a level that, you, that the naked eye won't be able to actually distinguish. Again, a quantum shift in this area, uh, that gives you an idea of the, of the effluent uh, from uh, the Bernie pulp mill that, that shut down uh, many years ago. But people, again, perceptions are, are thinking this, when in reality they should be focusing on this. <coughs>